गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर निरंजन चौहान प्रेजेंटिंग टूडे टू यू जस्टेशनल ट्रोफोप्लास्टिक नियोप्लाजम इट्स एन अंडर ग्रेजुएट लेक्चर फॉर माई एम यू एच एस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ साइन हॉस्पिटल एंड अदर कॉलेजेस टूडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट जस्टेशनल ट्रोफोप्लास्टिक नियोप्लाजम आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट माई लेक्चर विद अ कोट बाय एब्राहिम लिंकन it's not the years in your life that counts it is the life which is the years which we count so it's very important that as an obstetrician and a gynecologist the next 35 45 years of your life you will be saving lives not only of mother but also of the babies which are there so it's very important that you will have to dedicate the next life of yours for treating patients and also looking after yourself and that's what this quote says it's not the years in your life that counts it's the life in your years it's your life and you have to give life to others and that's what we call it as a noble profession and not a royal profession remember one thing so let's start to understand what is the spectrum of diseases of gtd there is gtn and gtd well both are synonyms to each other and what we have to understand is basically it's an abnormal proliferation of the trophoblastic tissue which is a very important part of placenta so there are two uh, you know arms which you can here see here the who classification and on the left hand side of your screen there is malformation of the chorionic villi that are predisposed to develop trophoblastic malignancies and that is commonly known as hydatiform mole it is of three types complete partial and invasive and on the right hand side you can see that there is malignant neoplasm and the worst scenario can occur is chorio carcinoma placental site trophoblastic tumor and epithelioid trophoblastic tumor so let's understand the pathogenesis of a complete mole so this is an empty ovum which you can find a sperm of 23x entering it into it and then there is a duplication where you have 46xx so this is diandric diploidy androgenesis this is diaspermic diploidy you can understand that now here there are two sperms entering and we have further 46xx being there form i hope you can understand what i am saying okay so this is a very simple diagram and it tells you about an empty ovum of 23x with a sperm there and that undergoes a duplication actually there is no sperm entering inside mind you there is no sperm entering inside but here you have a sperm which enters and that further causes the problem of complete mole here you see the vesicles are grossly swollen see this and they form like bunch of grapes there is no embryo now let us understand the partial mole here you find that the ovum is 23x and you have two sperms which enter inside and that causes a triploidy that is 23x 23y 23x okay so you have to understand how this triploidy is formed i request the host to please allow members in the waiting room and admit them as i can't do both so support please add members as they are entering the room for this lecture so you have a partial hereditary form mole where it has multiple congenital malformations and it is often mixed 
with the trophoblastic tissue often associated with severe hypertension so you have an embryo and a placenta being there so the difference here is being seen between complete mole and partial mole so the karyotype it is 46xx or 46xy which is called as a complete mole while partial mole has triploidy the embryo is absent in complete mole while in the partial mole the embryo is present there are more marked hydropic swelling and all the villi are involved but in the partial mole it is less pronounced there are focal cystins land less prominent the trophoblastic proliferation is variable and may be marked but here in partial mole it is focal and minimal and the development of gtn is 10 to 30% more in complete mole while in partial mole it is 0.5 to 4 here you can see the histopathology in complete hydro hydratiform uh, mole you will find very uh, you know the proliferation is quite quite more you can see big big proliferations you can see my arrow here while in the partial hydratiform mole the proliferation is focal and it is not that much marked further if we go ahead to differentiate between the clinical features you have to understand that the complete mole can have theca lutein cyst which is approximately 25 to 30% in partial mole it is 5 to 10% the uterine size is 50% larger in complete mole while partial mole it could be same or small for date medical complications are more frequent in the complete mole as compared to the partial mole and there is a need of chemotherapy in 15% of cases of complete mole as compared to 0.5% of partial mole now beta hcg value is very important we have to serially do it once we have such patients coming and further follow up and monitoring but if you compare it is markedly increased in complete mole and partial mole it is partially increased now let us understand the symptoms the symptoms of such patients having vesicular mole commonly is a triad that is amenorrhea they have vaginal bleeding and there could be also slight nausea vomiting but in addition to this there is a passage of hydropic vesicles you can see a wonderful picture here below which tells you that how they look in addition you have the patient complaining of pelvic pain and they might require admission anti emetics and iv fluid most importantly you have to understand that the partial mole also present as a missed abortion or incomplete abortion and in worst scenario you can find patients with exophthalmos that is bulging of eyes there could be clinically evident hyperthyroidism seen in 7% of patients and the blood pressure is high normally it is 110 or 120 by 80 but here you will find that before 20 weeks of gestation you have patients having blood pressure and it is found in 27% of patient with complete heredity form mole so you have in addition to this there is protein urea there is hyperreflexia and we have sometime patients convulsing which is rarely seen in such cases i request the support to please allow and enter the students from the waiting room into the class because i am only doing it and i request that you please concentrate and admit the members in the class so the signs what are the signs a beautiful picture on the right hand side shows 
the cesarean enlargement of the uterus 8 weeks 12 weeks and 16 weeks but if you compare the hydatiform mole it is much more it's a large for date uterus there are thecal lutein cysts where you can see the bilateral enlargement of the ovary with thecal lutein cyst it is found in 25% and these thecal lutein cysts are 6 cm and more in diameter and they develop in 50% of patients imagine how much the incidence is high so they require an evacuation however it might regress spontaneously also within the next 2 to 3 months so once you have understood the patient's history the triad of vaginal bleeding amenorrhea hyperemesis a large fall date uterus you need to do a sonography and we have to understand that ultrasound is very important no issues i will admit them thank you support you have to do a wonderful ultrasound a transvaginal ultrasound or a transabdominal ultrasound with full bladder and you find a snow storm appearance a generalized swelling of the chorionic villi in a complete mole without an embryo and the partial mole you find focal cystic spaces of varying diameter i hope you are understanding you can acknowledge in the chat box if you have any questions i am here to answer it's a very simple very simple presentation quite understandable and here you find that there is also a gestational sac which can be seen so apart from the small small spaces you find an increase in the transverse diameter of the gestational sac you need to confirm this diagnosis and do the treatment of such patients so what is the treatment you can find a tray on the right hand side which tells you different number of cannulas so you have 4 mm 6 mm 8 mm 10 mm 12 mm suction cannula they are made up of metals or they are made up of plastic and to which you have to attach the suction machine and you have to maintain a pressure which is built up in the uterine cavity but before that you need to dilate the cervix with a dilator so always remember if it is a 8 week size you have to go 2 mm above that so 10 mm you have to dilate and then you have to go on putting the cannula so you can go maximum till 12 mm and you have to keep a hand on the top of the fundus because as you are curating out or sucking out the hydropic uh, vesicles grape like vesicles it is coming into the suction bottle it will take the procedure might take 15 to 20 minutes and you will find as the contents are getting evacuated the size of the fundal height is reducing over a period of time and remember to please cross match blood and see that blood is also given to her because they undergo and they become anemic and after the evacuation you will find that there is now a gripping sensation on to the suction cannula as the uterus is contracting and the suction is been maintained and you need to do a sharp curate arch you have a black uterine curate you have a blunt curate on one side and the sharp curate you have to use a sharp curate to remove the residual molar tissues especially at the cornual and the fundal region and the posterior upper wall and you have bubbles coming out that means you have done a complete suction evacuation where the uterus is gripping the suction cannula the uterus size is reduced now approximately to 6 to 8 week size if it was a larger we have done suction evacuation of 30 32 week size of the uterus in sian hospital emergency where the procedure takes about 15 to 20 minutes and you find that gradually 
the size of the uterus reduces. So there are three things. One is the gripping of the uterus on the suction cannula, the cricket ball appearance of the hard uterus, and the bubbles are coming and stoppage of bleeding are the important signs that you have done a wonderful suction curettage. The job is complete. You will find as when you do the serial beta HCG henceforth, it will be reducing. Some of them recommend that admit the patient again and do a uh, repeat curettage after seven days, but it depends. If it is a RH negative patient, you need to give anti-D because the trophoblastic cells are expressing RHD factor. And in some of them where it is a complete molar pregnancy, the beta HCG levels are unreliable or they are very high. You need to give patients with prophylactic chemotherapy. And when you discharge such patients, write on the discharge card that if she has nausea vomiting, if she has still bleeding PV continuous, after 15 days or before 15 days, when she is asked to follow up, or she has hemoptysis, hematemesis, vomiting of blood, or coughing blood, you need to report back to your OPD, your doctor, so that he can treat you. So the follow-up is very important. A serial beta HCG has to be done every week until three consecutive tests are negative, and then you need to do beta HCG every monthly for the next six months. And if it is a complete mole, you might have to go further evaluating every three months and every six months. If you are suspecting a patient with choriocarcinoma, we will talk that later. The most important advice is asking the patient to avoid pregnancy for at least six months after the first normal beta HCG, not that the interval between the present pregnancy being evaluated of vesicular mole and then becoming pregnant after six months. No, after the first normal beta HCG. So how to prevent pregnancy? You need to give her contraception methods like barrier method or OC pills. OC pills are safe. Okay. And then in the subsequent pregnancy, once she has confirmed with a urine pregnancy test being positive, she has symptoms of amenorrhea, you need to send her beta HCG at that time. But presently, you also have to do the placental histopathology and check beta HCG six weeks postpartum. However, if the patient is 40 years old, the beta HCG is not coming down, and it is more than 1 lakh international units before emptying the mole. And the regression curve of beta HCG is not progressively declining. It is going like this, going up, going up, and then going down. So it is not a plateau which you will find. Or the uterus is obviously larger than the size of amenorrhea. She has a fecal utensis which is more than 6 centimeters. There is hyperplasia of tropoblastic cells in the second curettage even being done after 7 days or 15 days and the patient is unable to follow up with you. She needs to undergo chemotherapy. We will discuss that later. What type of chemotherapy to be done. Now we go to the International Federation of Gynecology and Obstetrics classification. It is commonly known as FIGO. It is it has got 130 countries which are part of a federation. Our obstetric and gynecological society that is Mumbai Obstetric Gynec Society is affiliated to the Federation of Obstetrics and Gynecological Society of India. We have 262 societies of India which are affiliated to FOXI and FOXI is affiliated to FIGO and FIGO has various committees. And the various committee, there is a GTD, GTN committee. It has its own guidelines and it comes out with management protocols and it tells us how to manage cases. So if they recommend following observations that if the four values or more of beta HCG do not plateau over the next three weeks, that is 1, 7, 14 and 21 days or the rise of beta HCG is 10% or greater 
for three or more values over at least two weeks time and there is presence of histologic choriocarcinoma even persistence of beta hcg six months after molar evacuation you need to diagnose these patients as a post molar gtn now we come to the malignant types we have already classified as benign and malignant benign is complete partial and we have invasive and malignant is on the other side but before that we have to understand that there is something like invasive mole it penetrates into the muscle of the uterine cavity and it can further extend into the broad ligament the vagina the vulva and also metastasize to the lungs these develops in about 20% of women who have had a complete mole removed by curettage as as i said before it can be complete or a partial and more chances of the complete mole converting into an invasive mole as compared to a partial mole and the rate of conversion is however less than 1% but it is quite dangerous and this is the histopathology which you can see there is myometrial invasion the vesicles are big they are very large and they can also undergo invasion into the peritoneum parametrium vaginal wall and this is the worst scenario you can find then we come to choriocarcinoma it is the worst and malignant form of gtd it is also characterized by abnormal trophoblastic hyperplasia anaplasia and absence of villi and it can develop from any form of pregnancy therefore it is called as gestational choreo carcinoma however there have been cases report or abdomen where there is no correlation to pregnancy and these are called as non gestational choriocarcinoma which tends to be very very less responsive to chemotherapy and has a very poor prognosis than the gestational variant now let us understand the risk of having choriocarcinoma percentage wise so if you see the heredity form mole has got a higher risk of 50% developing into choriocarcinoma as compared to an ectopic pregnancy having 2% spontaneous abortion having 23% and normal term pregnancy of 20 to 30% hello madam i will call you back i am in midst of a lecture choriocarcinoma let us understand the pathology now if you see this tumor grossly it is a very fleshy tumor with yellowish white areas intermingled with large pale areas of ischemic necrosis there are cystic and softening extensive hemorrhages cancer embolus is also found in para uterine vein and luteinizing cyst may be found this is a very big bulky mass with solid and cystic tan areas with extensive hemorrhage and see the microscopic examination you will find that there is an alteration of the cytoplasmic nuclear ratio it does not produce chorionic villi but consists entirely of the proliferating cytotrophoblastic cells and syncytio trophoblastic cells and these cells invade the myometrium and the blood vessels so both the types of them invade and the mitotic figures are there there is marked chromatin level and you can find there is a red arrow and a blue arrow the red arrow are showing the cytotrophoblast invading into the myometrium and the blue arrow is a marked chromatin a darker color that is syncytiotrophoblast now let us go to the second type of malignant gtd following knowledge of choriocarcinoma there is one more pathology which is known as placental site trophoblastic tumor it develops only from the placental implantation site the incidence is less than 2% it 
your beta hcg is not reliable but human placental lactogen is raised it invades the myometrium the blood vessels but rarely it metastasizes and it is insensitive to chemotherapy most often it develops after a normal pregnancy or an abortion and this is the histopathological gross picture and the microscopic picture in front of you and it diffusely infiltrates the uterine wall on the left hand side while on the right hand side you find there is a marked cytological atypia numerous mitotic figures hyperchromasia and alteration in the intercytoplasmic nuclear ratio the third type is called as epithelioid trophoblastic tumor and it arises from the chorionic type that is the intermediate cells there are distinct uterine masses there is no metastasis and this stains beyond immunohistochemistry it stains with the placental specific alkaline phosphatase enzyme and there is a geographic necrosis seen here we have this diagram which you can see a on the left hand side there are neoplastic aggregates and they are better defined than in the placental site trophoblastic tumor and may resemble carcinoma b on the right hand side these are the group of tumor cells which are occasionally with clear cytoplasm so indistinctly there is no nucleus but clear cytoplasm and are separated by hyaline stroma so this is what is called as epithelioid trophoblastic tumor now let us understand the manifestations of invasive mole choriocarcinoma and the history is common it is usually a complete mole or it is less commonly a partial mole and the tumor can develop even after normal pregnancy ectopic or an abortion so you have the same thing amenorrhea bleeding pv this tumor penetrates into the uterine wall it ruptures the uterine serosa it can go further into the peritoneal cavity there could be vaginal expansions of the vesicles it can invade into the cervix and you have infection super added with a discharge from the vagina pain in the pelvic region and fever amenorrhea and the uterine size is larger there are thickal uterine cells and if it has metastasized into the vagina you might find irregular or brisk hemorrhagic area when you put a speculum an ulcer or a vaginal mass so that is the worst scenario of choriocarcinoma i have seen one or two cases in my 30 years of practice the worst scenario is the patient comes with hemoptysis hemaptysis dyspnea cough and even if the distance spread has occurred she can have stroke hemiplegia liver if there is involvement she can have jaundice malina epigastric pain so you have to remember that these are the worst scenario where the metastasis has occurred beyond the lungs or into the brain liver and git now if you see the clinical manifestation of placental site tumor it is bleeding pv the disease also penetrates into the uterine wall i have already explained you how grossly and microscopically you can see under a microscope and there is bleeding into the abdominal cavity as well with severe abdominal pain persistent abdominal swelling and these are all related to post normal pregnancy post abortus post missed abortion post ectopic pregnancy post complete b mole or post incomplete or a partial mole so here you find the beta hcg level are very very high elevated more than 1 lakh milli international units per ml the cbc count will show you whether there is infection there is leukopenia there is leukocytosis lfts and and renal function test will be altered and when you see a uh, x ray you will find metastasis and cannonball appearance with pleural effusion and consolidation on an x ray 
posterior anterior view on ultrasound you will find same snowstorm appearance but you need to further confirm the diagnosis by doing a doppler or a color doppler study if required a ct and mri to be done and obviously the final pathological diagnosis will be confirmation by collecting the curate material and sending it for his immunohistochemistry or normal uh, findings by staining them this is the picture you find on a doppler see the increase of resistivity index the pi index which is here and there is yellow and the blue and the red color the amount of color which is there will determine that it is choriocarcinoma and invasive mole it is a snowstorm appearance you can see here metastasis into the lungs see the x rays pa view there are solidified areas they are cannon ball appearance what we call them is typically seen in such patients if it is a vaginal metastasis you will find this area of hemorrhage is bluish color looking mass protruding from the posterior fornix anterior vaginal wall and you can also feel them on a pv examination on the right hand side this mass can be felt and the worst scenario there is a cranial mri with large metastasis on the left and there is a brain mri you can find a patient with a solitary brain metastasis in remission so this is the worst scenario now see the liver you can see an autopsy specimen of multiple hemorrhagic areas hepatic metastasis in various areas and ct scan of the liver also shows metastasis so let us understand first the prognosis and the prognosis will depend upon what stage the patient has presented to you so stage 1 very simple you don't have to go through all these things stage 1 involvement of the uterus stage 2 beyond the uterus into the vagina and pelvis stage 3 pulmonary metastasis stage 4 it is gone beyond the lungs it is brain kidneys git and there is a higher risk category and they are resistant to chemotherapy and the histological pattern of choriocarcinoma is usually present is present and the disease commonly follows a non molar pregnancy so it is a very very simple thing you can remember what are i will repeat it stage 1 persistently elevated beta hcg involvement of only the uterine corpus stage 2 elevated beta hcg involvement of the parametrium the vagina the pelvis or both stage 3 pulmonary metastasis with involvement of pulmonary lesion on the chest radiograph as i said a cannon ball appearance a rising uh, a rising beta hcg level and stage 4 it has gone beyond the lungs into the brain kidney gi tract and it could be a non molar pregnancy this is the figo staging of gtm this is also the diagram which tells you the choriocarcinoma involving only the uterus stage 1 figo stage 2 involvement of the ovary into the vagina you can see beyond the pelvis into the fallopian tube and into the lateral wall the broad ligament stage 3 cannon ball appearance on the x ray chest pa view and stage 4 it has gone into the brain kidneys and other organs metastasis now the prognostic scoring system we will be classifying the gtn into low risk and high risk depending upon these prognostic factors if you have a patient of gtn a high level of beta hcg titer and she has a snowstorm appearance there is a color doppler which tells you the beta hcg has a very high level more than 1 lakh milli international units per ml okay or it is less than 10 uh, you know 1 lakh then you need to have all these factors into consideration where on the left hand side you have age the pregnancy so if the age is less than 40 more than or equal to 40 you will be having the scoring system of 0 1 2 and 4 and interval months from the pregnancy less than 4 4 to 6 interval 
from the pregnancy 7 to 12 months and more than 12 pre treatment serum beta hcg it is less than 10 raised to 3 10 raised to 3 is to 4 and 1 score 10 raised to 4 and to 10 raised to 5 you give two points and four it is more than 10 raised to 5 also the tumor size depending whether it is less than 3 or more than 5 centimeters you will be giving 0 1 2 site of metastasis involvement whether it is lung 0 if it is spleen and kidney it is 1 if it is git it is 2 and if it is liver and brain 4 points to be added and the number of metastasis where where metastasis is found you have to give more than one and maximum up to eight and any failed chemotherapy cycle a single dose combination therapy given so all these points have to be taken into consideration and once that is done you will be classifying into low risk gtn where the risk score is six or less or it comes into FIGO stage 1, 2, 3. And it is a low risk metastasis only up to the lungs. The duration is less than 4 months from the index pregnancy. The beta HCG is less than 40,000 international units per ml. And it is a non-metastatic GTN. If it is high risk, then the FIGO stage 4. And the risk score is 7 or more. So this is what, depending upon that, you will be giving her the treatment. So if it is a stage one involvement and only FIGO stage one, that is up till the uterus and the corpus single agent chemotherapy. If it becomes resistant, then you need to do a hysterectomy with a combination therapy or a hysterectomy with adjuvant chemotherapy. If it is stage 2 and 3, that means it has gone beyond the uterus into the cervix, vagina or into the lungs. Further, you will be classifying depending upon the risk factor less than 7 and more than 7. A single agent or a combination chemotherapy will be given to her. And if it is stage 4, you will be giving only combination chemotherapy. But if the brain is involved, the whole brain irradiation of 3000 centigyra has to be given. Even a craniotomy might have to be done. In liver, you need to do an arterial infusion of chemotherapy and resection of the quadrant to manage the complication because they bleed, the liver bleeds. So you need to resect also. And if it is resistant stage 4 beyond the brain and beyond the kidney, beyond the spleen, beyond the lungs, you need to also have a second line combination chemotherapy. A wonderful chart you have to understand. Now let us understand the chemotherapeutic agents. So the commonly used agent is methotrexate. It is 50 ml or 5000 milligram bottle which is available. You have to calculate the dose. The dose is 1 milligram per kg. So if she is 60 milligram, if she is 60 kg, you need to give her 60 milligram of intramuscular methotrexate or you can put it into IV infusion but preferably we use intramuscular and they have to be given alternate day so you give four shots of this drug you have to give also salvage folinic acid with this that is 0.1 milligram per kg and they have to be given on even days and then 20% of them may fail. So you might have to give one more weekly shot of intramuscular methotrexate that is 40 milligram per meter square weekly. You can also add actinomycin, which is another drug and it has to be given intravenously. It has to be pushed and it has to be given every 14 days. That is 1.25 milligram per meter square. It is used in patients where the metastasis has occurred into the liver, the liver, uh, uh, you know, uh, no, it is not to be used. It is contraindicated when the patient has got hepatic dysfunction. So mind you, if your bilirubin or the patient's bilirubin is, is elevated, if the creatinine level is elevated, you do not give methotrexate. You have, uh, you know, you have to give actinomycin. So it is very important that 
those patients with hepatic dysfunctions or where methotrexate is contraindicated actinomycin is another choice however it causes severe sloughing if extra vasated and then follow up of the single agent chemotherapy is simple you need to do a complete blood count you need to do liver function test creatinine level beta hcg serially falling down continuous treatment cycle for 1 to 3 weeks after the normal beta hcg you need to have a negative beta hcg means num no number of malignant cells are less than 10 raised to 7 complete remission in 85 to 90% and 80% require only one course the toxicity of these drugs you have to keep in mind they cause thrombocytopenia neutropenia and hepatotoxicity so you need to give stem cell therapy you need to give fill fill grass stem which can be given after the chemotherapy is over for 4 to 5 days and that helps to increase further the leukocyte count and will reduce the thrombocytopenia the combination chemotherapy drugs are day 1 day 2 and day 3 they are given for high risk gestational trophoblastic neoplasm the drug of choice is etoposide actinomycin and methotrexate the dose has to be given over a 30 minutes time they are mentioned here and similarly on day 2 also you need to repeat but here we will be instead of adding methotrexate here you will be giving folinic acid rescue and then day 8 you need to give cyclophosphamide and vincristine and these cycles are to be repeated on the 15th day 16th and 22 every two weekly so mind you this is the domain of the medical oncologist you need to have a joint consultation with them the patient comes back to the obstetrics opd and they tell you what is happening following the chemotherapy and the fall so it is a combination of a medical oncologist and an obstetrician coming together so we have this regime ends that is ema co ema ep regime they uh, are given also in resistant cases where cyclophosphamide and vincristine we substitute by etoposide and cisplatinum in there is a ema ep resistant cases you have paclitaxel with cisplatinum alternating with etoposide or iphosphamide may be used that is known as an ice regimen and intensive chemotherapy can also cause increased risk of leukemia so in conclusion we have gone through today complete mole partial mole invasive mole we have choreo carcinoma placental site gtd you have epithelioid gtd you have how to diagnose with the symptoms the signs then the ultrasound picture of snow storm appearance you have doppler study if required a ct and mri to be done and following which you need to do a proper beta hcg a chest x ray if you suspect a choreo carcinoma she has symptoms of hemoptysis hematemesis malina hepatic dysfunction and you need to do a proper curettage the first curettage is very important 80% of them are cured you need to do the beta hcg tight tightering fall which regression curve is there and that has to be monitored hence you have to call this patient every 15 days one month so we put a block in this vesicular mole with red chokra there and we call them every 15 days every one month we call them and find out whether the beta hcg titer is lowering down whether every time she has any complaints you need to check on this however it is very important to have the prognostic score who scoring uh, you know the classification which is there and that will tell you further how to manage such cases the more than seven score of who are high risk disease and they require chemotherapy a single chemotherapy a combination chemotherapy if it is involvement of the liver or the brain you need to give radiation you need to do radiation to the brain you also need to do probably a resection of the liver lobe where the metastasis has occurred however it is very important to understand this pathology and gtn is very sensitive to chemotherapy 
so with this i would like to conclude my lecture and stop sharing i hope i have done justice to all of you if there are any questions i request you to please uh, uh, you know put in the chat box if not i assume everyone has understood the lecture very nicely and i thank all of you to spend your valuable precious time see you soon in the wards during your obstetric posting thank you i would like to thank dr ume umara my registrar who has taken a lot of efforts with inputs from me and others to do a wonderful video presentation thank you so much and we would like to thank end you, this session now thank you so much we are post emergency i will see you on the rounds around 10:30 bye yes sir bye sir thank you